In our continuing series with authors, we introduce today's author, uh, uh, first one of the day, Edward Jones. He is the author of The After Meal, a profound book. It is published by Fulton Books. You can go to FultonBooks.com, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. He is here to join us this morning. Edward, good morning. Congratulations on your book. It's a compelling book. Why don't I let you pick it up from there and talk about it and why you wrote it? Good morning, Stu. Yes. I wrote the book because um, looking at, at my background, I'm an engineer for 30 years, and I started taking a master gardener's class, and I started to dive into the reasons um, that affect horticulture, like pesticides, the insects that crawl upon the Earth's surface. So I saw that things were happening that were really detrimental, and when I looked into the garbage that we create, I found out that our um, throwaway society, we throw everything away. And just before we throw it away, we turn it into garbage. Now, there's a way of stopping that from happening by simply separating all of our liquids from animal and vegetable waste. And so that's where my passion lies in um, giving back to the world that's done so much for me by creating such a, a product as the water reclamation canister, which I describe in my book. The after meal, <clears throat> which allows us to, you know, what I think is the first point of um, stopping the creation of garbage by separating liquids from animal and vegetable waste. So I tried to put it all down into a book called The After Meal and try to uh, describe the value of our natural resources that go into makeup of garbage. Regarding the research put into this, well, what's been a general consensus out from other experts, and I don't know where the expertise lies in this, but what, what have been the results of obviously your efforts to try to make our situation environmentally and health-wise much better than it is? Well, if you dive into, if you do research into like waste management facilities, you know, you'll find that the first thing they'll tell us is to separate all of our waste matter, you know, vegetable matter, food matter, animal vegetable waste. They, they, that's what they would like us to do. But it's so hard to do because all of our waste receptacles are one entity, the black line of bag. We have been trained to put everything into the black line of bag. We put cups in there, paper in there, animal vegetable waste in there. And, and the fact of the matter is that uh, water is not a throwawayable item. I mean, in the form of ice and cups, it just persists there. Ice lives a long time. We drink off the syrup. And then the ice remains, and then we throw all of these things into the black line of the bag, and the ice melts, and it mixes up with the, the chemicals and the paper, the ink, the bleach, uh, all of the uh, dyes and pesticides in our food products, and it turns into a toxic waste that we all recognize, you know, when we see it. You know, every restaurant has this big problem of all of the weight that the water and everything adds as it mixes up. So I came up with this idea of trying to separate it at the point of use after we finished our meal, what's left is the after meal. <clears throat> so I developed a system, a water reclamation canister, which I feel is the first step in preventing all of this stuff from turning into garbage. Post-packaging is just that, our natural resources that are packages. But we call them trash, but they're actually post-packaging. So, you know, these things are our natural resources, and we, when we separate them, we give them a second life. We don't have to throw everything away, especially ice. Ice is one thing that I target with my water reclamation canister, which actually remelts the ice and lets us use it in a toilet or a lawn application. It's what we should do with such things as water and ice, potable water. All right. Uh, it sounds like a great book, tremendous education. Uh, in many ways, uh, certainly apolitical. I mean, there can't be any objection to making our environment and our lives uh, better than I it agree. is. So I, I yeah. thank you, Edward Jones, for coming on. The book is The After Meal. It's published by Fulton Books and uh, continued success in writing. Okay. From the bathroom. He says bathrooms are the biggest water guzzlers. His idea is to reclaim some of that water and reuse it. Although the idea may not be all that original, the system that makes it work is... 30% of water going down the toilet drain every time you flush. The shower takes about 30 to 40 gallons per person. 
the bath takes even more. In this position, the green light indicates that the unit is ready to recycle. Once you flick on the switch, it starts working. Jones gave us a demonstration. The draining water from the bathtub is channeled into a chlorination tank. From there, it's pumped upwards and filtered not once, but twice. It's then pumped into a holding tank. This reclaimed water can then be used for flushing toilets and watering the landscape. If you can selectively choose those waters, the, um, the fresh water that goes down your waste, and reuse it in a sense, like I haven't used dirty water fresh water in my toilet since January of this year. All of the water's been reconditioned water, reclaimed water. Jones has been tinkering with his invention for more than two years now. He calls this unit a water monitoring system, or just WMS. He's gone through three prototypes to make the system perfect. But what Bay Area residents may love most about WMS is the fact it enables them to water. Hi. The previous interview was conducted on May 14, 1990 by Penny Nikamuru of Channel 11 KNTV San Jose News Team. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. The following information is a little bit more detailed information on my product, the WMS 2000, the water monitoring system. The system costs about $1,000 to install. Five have been sold so far, and now Jones says he's getting a lot of interest from drought-stricken Santa Barbara County. We are all one within the universe. We are all made of the stuff of stardust. In this vast cosmic arena, in our obscurity within this cosmos, there is not one clue suggesting that help will come from somewhere else to save us from ourselves. This sphere, which we call Earth, is the only world which we know to harbor life. There is nowhere else presently which our species can go to live as we presently do. This is where we must make our stand. This underscores the necessity that we must cooperate more friendly with one another and to preserve and cherish the only place we know which we can call home. Have you ever seen one of those water challenges where you get to guess which of the bottled water companies has the freshest water? Only to find out that most of all of them have some level of deficiency. Some are too alkaline, or some are too high with pH levels. Some boast of coming from some place where the water is freshest place on earth. Or some other fantastic claim. Well, the truth is that all of these manufacturers filter the water that they use. And most of the water sources are straight from the same tap water that we all use. Only thing is, they've all been sent through some sort of industrial filtration system and need to have additives added, such as chlorine or extra vitamins. Truth is, most all sources of water found in America are already tainted with such impurities as medicines that we flush down our toilets or pesticides from our farmers. Pollution can come from chicken or swine farming, or any other type of activity generating hazardous waste. Polluting ingredients that affect creatures that live in water, which also affects us and our health. Ever wonder where a majority of the contaminants come from? Well, one primary daily source that's overlooked is what we do with our leftover foods and liquids. As I call it in my book, The After Meal, when we throw away mixed liquids and solids in the garbage waste cycle, we create toxic liquids. You see, leftover animal and vegetable waste, once it's mixed with liquids that we also throw away, gets mixed up in the black liner bag, creating a solution that oftentimes gets placed into our main source of dealing with our waste products, the black liner bag. This toxic liquid, or lech tape, soon makes its way to our landfills. This concoction eventually makes it down into our underground water aquifers or our streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans due to spills once it rains or by other means of accidental contamination. One thing we can do to prevent the creation of these elements, these liquids, 
and animal and vegetable waste would be to stop mixing them up in the first place. You see, one way or the other, these pollutants get into our water source or spilled onto the Earth's surface, which is how it gets into our food or water sources, thus lit back into our bodies. We can prevent some of this pollutant by outfitting our restaurants with liquid waste receptacles or waste or uh, liquid waste cans, such as the one I have invented, which is called the WRC, or water reclamation canister. It's a gray water system which gives our waiters and waitresses a place to dispose of unused table water. It separates ice from drinks and melts it for a secondary use, such as toilet or lawn applications. Who needs to pee in fresh water? Uh, it also accepts potable water, such as melted ice from salad bars or soda drinks containers, which use ice to cool drinks at the convenience store. So instead of flushing this potable water down into the sewer, we have an alternative system which targets such reusable water streams to a toilet or lawn application. The water reclamation canister is my patented gray water system developed by OMT Systems, my company, One Man's Trash. For more information about my book, The After Meal, and my product, the WRC, go to omtsystems.com. See, many of these problems, we create our own selves don't just exist. Care about something. We're all in this boat together. Hey, how you doing? I'm just fine. Go Warriors! All right. What do you got? All I'm green? Doing the, all green. I'm doing a documentary on hazardous waste recycling and all that stuff. My name is David Jones. I'm an author and an inventor of a liquid right waste on. can. Nice. I just wanted to say how you doing to you guys. You I'm guys doing, doing great. We're going to help you get rid job. of your garbage set. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> what, you just got all green? Yes, sir. All right. Care to say your name? My name's Ryan. You might be famous one day if I get my wish. <laughs> right Thank you, sir. Don't forget about Ryan when you get famous. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. The Romans built great aqueducts of semen and brick to bring fresh water to their bath booths and supply their civilization with fresh water which kept down disease and pestilence, which took down other great civilizations. Fast forward to the great civilizations of the European nation of the 18th century, it was disease and the Black Plague which wiped out their populations by the millions. As we see examples of modern day viruses like bird influenza and mosquito based transmissions of pestilence which threaten us today but were it not for modern day medical technology we too would be in dire straits the point being is that water which is essential to all life on earth 
is also the key to a healthy, vibrant life on Earth. Awakening in the 21st century to see the advent of such birth problems such as autism, cancers, Lou Gehrig's syndrome, and other such unexplainable anomalies which affect us, I beg to argue that the poisoning of our water supply should be considered and examined more thoroughly. Scientists have already proven and tied together the fact that medicine that we flush down our very own toilet have resurfaced to be discovered in the bodies of our very own food source, such, such as fish and other food sources in our direct food chain. When we examine the foods that we consume, we find the chemical ingredients in butter fats, which are a mixture of triglycerides of different fatty acids, such as oleic, eristic, palmitic, and steroidic acids, which make up 80% of these fatty acids. Artificial strawberry flavors can contain nearly 50 chemical ingredients. MSG, which is an excitotoxin, which means it overexcites your cells to the point of damage or death, causing brain dysfunction and damage to varying degrees and potentially even triggering or worsening learning disabilities, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, and more. Preservers which lengthen the shelf life of foods are linked to health problems such as cancers, allergic reactions, and more. Preservatives that affect the neurological system of the brain, alter behavior and cause cancers, are all part of the toxic makeup which can be found in the makeup of the toxins within the black liner bag. I argue, does it still make sense to combine liquids in the mix with other waste products of animal and vegetable waste, creating a pelletry dish of toxic elements which cannot be tested? Is it a far reach to conclude that these liquids that go into our black liner bag should be more carefully considered as shitting where you eat? As the liquids from these same black liner bags can easily end up in our bodies. I conclude. The downfall of the great America can very well be attributed to how we handle our garbage, how we create it or not. My product, the WRC, Water Recognition Canister, is one step towards preventing a great catastrophe. The mixing of liquids and solids in the black line of bed. Find out all about it in my book, The Aftermath. Available July of this year. When our, when our, when our I'm going to make your video go viral. So you have a, everything is fine for you here? The yes. Accommodation for yes, everything is excellent. That's good. That's you guys are doing a tremendous service. That's what we want to hear. We want to give the best service that we can. Mm -hmm. All the a documentary on what you're doing. Sure. You're going to be on a video, man. I hope to be somebody one day. I got a, I got a video. I got a book. It's called The After Meal. It's all, people think because they put it in a black line of bag, it's gone. But the people that do this, this is what it's all about. I'm putting a video on that. So. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. We're a hauling company. It's my own family, personal personal family business right here. We got to put no. That's your phone number there? Uh, yep, that's our phone number right here. Junk Titans, we've been at it for 12 years. Uh, Anything so, else you want to say about it? Uh, yeah, you know, we're just young black men trying to do something for ourselves out here. That's it, you know. Producing right. and, and trying to make a better way for our people, that's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Documentary on recycling. Uh, okay. You're gonna be on you're gonna be on TV. Trying to do our part. <laughs> yes, sir.
planet, this is where we do it in my community. Plastics. They get a lot of money. We turn in reusable plastics. This is how you do it. Saving our earth. If she can do it, why can't you? dust to dust, liquids to liquids. This is a must. And this is why the separation of post-packaging material is so very important and valuable. ま、形のあるまま入れられるんで、油になるっていうことが分かりやすい。これです、一応入れます。これで今ヒーターの温度がどんどん上がり始めて、え、プラスチックが溶けて、ガス、え、液体になります。液体が沸騰してからえ、ガスが